Hey, Run Elite, Andrew Snow here. Now we're back on the topic here of weight loss for running faster. Now I have this video here that has done pretty well. I've heard from a lot of you who got something really great from this video, but I wanna go a little bit deeper here with you because it's not just about losing weight to run faster, it's specifically about losing extra body weight to run faster. Because you can get yourself into a pretty bad situation if we're trying to just lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, and think that we're gonna keep on running better. Because you can lose water weight, you can lose glycogen, you can lose muscle mass, heck, you could lose an arm or a leg, and you're technically way less, but it's not good for your running, of course. So we wanna have ideal health and ideal body weight for long distance running. So this video here is gonna be on exactly that. We're going to talk about not how to lose weight. That's other videos. And we go deep into that in nutrition. But today we're going to talk about the what. What exactly are we trying to do here? Are we trying to just lose weight? Are we trying to lose body fat? What about water? What about glycogen? What about bone density? Hmm, if some of these things should be going up, aren't we going to gain weight? Well, we're going to talk about all that here. And I'm going to share with you a clever way that you can measure this for yourself. Ready? Let's go. Some of the traps of losing weight. I'm gonna tell you about two of them. They're just hypothetical examples that maybe you've come across before. Now, if you just stand on a scale and you look at how much weight it's telling you you are, I guess if you're like overweight, like really overweight, and over the long term, we're looking at the scale, it might be a good proxy of the, heading in the right direction. But probably as a distance runner, you're already, you know, somewhat lean, maybe even thin, athletic build to some degree, some more than others, right? But there's two problems that we can fall into. Number one, if we're on a high fat diet, low carbohydrate diet, maybe like a keto diet or carnivore diet or something like that, then one of the problems is that you can lose a lot of weight, but it's gonna come really quickly through two places. Number one, it's gonna come from losing glycogen. Now we all know how valuable glycogen is for running our race. When you run out of glycogen in a marathon, you hit the wall. So that's why we take gels and sugar and sport drinks during the actual marathon to try to top that off. So if you stop eating carbohydrate, your body is gonna use up the stored glycogen that you have as a runner. Now it's stored in your liver, it's stored in your muscles, and you have many pounds of this. So if we stop taking in carbohydrate, you're gonna use that glycogen pretty quickly over just days and you're gonna lose weight. But it gets crazier because glycogen stores with it water. And so every time you lose some glycogen, you're also losing the water that was associated with it. So you're gonna lose weight very rapidly. And you see this sometimes, don't you? With people who go on a keto diet, carnivore diet, uh, high fat, low carbohydrate, a variation of one of these, if they're doing it for weight loss, you probably hear people say, guess what? It works. They'll say it works because three days, five days, seven days or so into their journey, they step on the scale and they lost weight. But they lost mostly glycogen and water. Now, as a runner, we're heading in the wrong direction. So in this case, you actually did lose weight. And that's what we're talking about, isn't it? But we lost it from places that we need. We need water and we need glycogen in order to run long distances. So we shouldn't do that. That's pitfall number one. Pitfall number two is that we start working out, not just with running, but also maybe in the gym and we're trying to put on some muscle, right? And we've all heard it before that muscle weighs more than fat. So it's possible that you could actually run more, lift more, and you could actually gain weight and you could tell yourself that it's because you gained some muscle. You lost some fat, gained muscle, and so I weigh a little bit more because muscle weighs more than fat, right? So how do we know if we're at ideal weight for our best running performance. How do we know if we're at ideal weight for our health and our longevity? Now, the remainder of this video here is gonna be talking about the metrics that you wanna look at and then how to measure them. We're gonna talk about different ways that you can measure them. I'm gonna share with you a one-time way that you can just kind of go get it measured. It's kind of expensive, but it's very useful. It gives you a lot of optics and metrics. I'm gonna give you a cheaper way that you can do it at the comfort of your own home for less money over a longer period of time. It's up to you, but we're gonna to have to find a way to measure. When we're talking about our body composition, you know, we can use all kinds of devices and we're we're gonna talk about those devices here. We're gonna talk about three of them, but a very easy snapshot that you can use is called BMI, body mass index. Now, I know, I know, a lot of people don't like body mass index because they say it doesn't tell the whole story. And that's true, sure, but we don't need to know the whole story all the time. If someone's body mass index is like a 40 versus a 18, it tells you a lot about what their body might look like. Now, unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger with like giant, huge muscles, if you have a uh, normal build and athletic build, it's gonna tell you some useful information. So the main advantage to BMI is that it's free and it's super quick and it gives us a snapshot that's somewhat useful. You can just go to a BMI calculator such as this one. You put in your height, 
you put in your weight and it'll give you a BMI. Now, it's not the total story, but it's a great place to start. You can do it right now before the end of this video even. And like I say, it's completely free. Everything else is gonna take more time and more money. So that's why BMI is useful, but let's go deeper. Now a DEXA scan is basically like an X-ray on steroids. It's gonna scan your body. It's gonna be able to tell you things like your bone density, how much water you have in your body, how much fat you have in your body, how much muscle. And it's gonna give you a composition of your body. Now that is much more useful than just your weight. So you can do that. It's a little bit expensive. You can just Google in your area, DEXA scan, D-E-X-A, DEXA scan. And it's probably gonna be about $200. Sometimes you can get multiple of them for less money as you keep going, but it's a one-time investment. And this may be for you if you wanna get really accurate measurements. One of the problems that I found with DEXA scans is that they don't give you one of the main metrics that I want to know, and that is what is visceral fat. We're going to need to know this to keep going here. All right, for the cutaway, I should probably change my shirt. So let's pick a different color. How about white? Presto. When we're talking about fat in your body, we can probably agree that excess fat is something that we want to minimize. But there's two kinds of fat in your body. There's the fat that's called subcutaneous. It's just under your skin. This is the fat that you can see in your arms, in your face, on your legs, whatever. We also have fat that is called visceral fat, and this is the fat that surrounds our organs. Now, when it comes to your running performance, it's just extra weight, but when it comes to your health and your longevity and the quality of what's going on in your body, that visceral fat is a killer. We really wanna minimize that. So knowing how much visceral fat versus total body fat that we have can be very useful. Now that I'm back in the main content of this, let's change shirts back, ready? Presto, we're back. A DEXA scan can tell you the two different kinds of fat, but the one that's in my local city here, I tried to go and do it and it says it doesn't tell you visceral fat. So I just thought it was kind of worthless. It's gonna tell me some cool stuff, but not one of the main ones I wanna know. So DEXA scan can work for you, but let's talk about other options that you have as well. First time I ever had my body composition analyzed was in a hospital in the health clinic and I did something called a bilateral electrical impedance. Now you stand on a scale and then you hold with your hands two different electrodes and it's gonna send a very low level current of electricity through your body and it's gonna be able to tell the difference between your upper body, your lower body and it's gonna measure all sorts of stuff. I mean the stuff that they can measure with these is so much more than you would think. You get a whole readout of what's going on in your body. And it's one of the gold standards for measuring body composition. So you can do this as well. It's option number two for you. You get a bilateral electrical impedance. You can maybe do it at a health clinic that's near you at a hospital who has a large health clinic. Otherwise, you'd have to like order one from online and it's going to be quite expensive. So uh, try to find one if you can. But there's a third way. A third way that you can do this is to measure at home. Now you can do it with a device that is a one-time cost and you're gonna be able to measure every day, every week, however long you want, and you can track your journey. Now, I'm gonna share with you a device that I use here and full disclosure is that they sent me one of these to use. I'm gonna tell you about it because it's pretty dang cool. It's gonna give you metrics that you can see at home that you can use and you can track yourself day after day or week after week, however much you want, it's pretty cool. So let's dive into this here. It's called the Hume Health Scale. So this is the empty box right here. The scale itself actually looks like this. Now, it kind of looks like a normal bathroom scale until you see that there's this cord that you can pull out. So what you do on this cord is you stand on the scale and you hold the cord. So what does this look like? Hmm, it looks a lot like that bilateral electrical impedance. So we're gonna have the potential here to be able to tell a lot more than just our weight. And in fact, things that we might be interested in, let's list out the things that are predictive of your running performance, your athleticism, and your health and longevity. Number one is BMI. We know that BMI between 19.5 and 21.5 is correlated highest with longevity. Virtually everybody is way above that. Even the standards given by the FDA are that we wanna be over 25 is considered overweight, but the research on this is that we wanna be 21.5 or lower down to 19.5. Beyond that, lower than that, we're considered underweight. Now, long distance runners, elite long distance runners, and the crazy thing here is that it's men or women have a very low percentage of body fat and they're gonna have BMIs in this range. So this scale is gonna tell you BMI, but we can do that for free already, so let's go deeper. We wanna know a couple of other things. We wanna know how much water we have in our body. Hydration is a really important topic. The average human body is composed of about 68% of water. You can see in this chart here that different tissues of your body are made up of different percentages of water. Now we're gonna go kind of quick here because I wanna make the point of what the scale is gonna do for you. Now fat has the lowest amount of water. And if we look at the chart here, 
Adipose tissue is 50% water, whereas basically every other tissue in your body, except for bones, are high 60s, 70s, or even 80% water. So aside from fat, you're mostly 70 to 75% water. Now that's important because you could be dehydrated at a cellular level. Literally your muscles or your bones or cells anywhere in your body could be dehydrated and you might not know if you just chugged a gallon of water and we looked at how much water is in your body, you actually have a lot of water in your body. Problem is it's all in your stomach and it's not where it needs to be, in your brain, in your muscles. It's just in this tube that goes through you and you're gonna pee it out. So it's really important to not just know how much water is in your body, but we wanna know how much water is in inside of the cells and outside of the cells. And this is gonna give us a better indication of how hydrated you are. Now, a scale like the Hume, or any of these, a DEXA scan or a bilateral electrical impedance, any of them, they're gonna be able to tell you this, but this is the way that you can do it at home. And it is gonna tell you how much water you have intracellular and extracellular. If you look at your Hume app, after you take your measurement and you stand on your scale and hold the electrode, uh, it's gonna instantaneously sync with the app. So here's what you can see. All right, we see weight first up here. I'm not as concerned with that right here because it's pretty standard, but then we can see BMI. All right, for me, Currently, I'm a 19.9 BMI. I actually measured myself this morning as well, and I was, I think, 19.6, but I weigh a little bit more right now because I've had breakfast and lunch and uh, several cups of tea. Body fat percentage. It's going to tell you a percentage of body fat. Now, this is really stinking useful. Isn't that more useful than just looking at your weight? We now know how much of our body is made up of fat, and it'll tell you how much actual weight. So not just for me, it's 10.8%, but body fat mass is actually 15.5 pounds. That's very cool to know. So in theory, that's how much fat I could lose. Now, you don't want to lose all of that. For goodness sake, I'm already pretty low right here. But we just know, in theory, it could be that much. Again, not healthful to do all that, but we know that it's not really possible to lose 20 pounds unless I lost muscle mass or bone mass too. So we now see lean mass, 119 pounds and lean mass percentage. I'm 84 essentially percent lean mass. Now this is really cool. Look at this. Instead of just knowing how much fat you have, we can see how much subcutaneous fat we have. I've got 13 pounds. And then we can see visceral fat. This one is really important. Visceral fat, you want to be very low, 3% or 5% or below. Uh, if we're getting up to like 10% of visceral fat, this is not good. This is literally fat around your internal organs. And we want to minimize this. And you would never know that if we just looked at a scale that was telling us weight. It also tells us our skeletal muscle mass. So this is how much muscle I've got on my whole body, 72 pounds. It tells you how much your skeleton weighs. I've got 24.0 pounds exactly. Uh, that's pretty cool, especially as we start getting older. If you're worried about osteopenia or tracking the density of your bones over time, now we get to body water percentage. Very cool. Currently I'm at 65.7%, but this is what I was talking about guys, is that we can see extracellular versus intracellular water. It's also gonna tell you your basal metabolic rate. And now I wrote to the company to ask them how they calculate basal metabolic rate. They're using a standard formula that you would your, your doctor would use the same formula. Metabolic age. Now resting heart rate, that's not really what we're measuring here because it's only measuring heart rate when you're on the scale. I just did it after a workout. So clearly it's not my resting heart rate. This is 40 minutes after a workout heart rate. So just take that with a grain of salt. That's what you get here. Now, I do hope that you've enjoyed this video up to this point. We're not quite done yet. I'm gonna give you some cliff notes for how you can actually improve your body composition. But if you've liked the video up to this point, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Any comment that you leave on the day that a video is released, I will respond to, and I do my best to respond to all comments. Uh, but if it's on the day it's released, I'll get back to you for sure. Now, how do we actually achieve changing our body composition. Well, on this app that comes with the human device, it'll actually give you exercises and it'll help guide you, but I'm gonna help guide you right here, right now. So if we think about the things that we want, we wanna increase our hydration, probably. I mean, I guess you could be overhydrated, right? But that's an interesting topic because you're only gonna become overhydrated if you're drinking pure water. If you're getting your water through your food, you're gonna hydrate even better. Because what are the things that increase absorption of water in your body? Well, having water with electrolytes and having water with some sugar. So water plus electrolytes plus sugar, what does that sound like? Sounds like juice, doesn't it? And juice from fruit or vegetables is in fruits and vegetables. So that's one of the best things that you can eat if you want to improve your body composition. Sometimes you could, maybe you've known somebody, maybe you've seen somebody on TV who's just like very large. And this could be for 
lots of reasons, but diet is really the main reason. Now think of what foods those people are eating. Um, likely they're going to be exorbitantly high in fat, exorbitantly low in water, enzymes, fiber, and things like this. So we really do want to swing the pendulum in our diet to having high water content, high carbohydrate foods. This is going to be plants. And I really do recommend raw fruits and vegetables for a portion, a large portion, however much you see fit at this point in your development, but a large portion of your calories coming from raw fruits and vegetables. It's gonna really help you with your body composition. Now, I'm not here to, to say like, look at me, hunky dunky, but I am pretty thin. My BMI is under 20. I can run 300 miles in the desert and not get dehydrated. Yeah, I'm taking in liquid as I'm going, but you know, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. For a distance runner, I'm strong. I'm certainly not no muscle man Arnold Schwarzenegger here, but I can pull my body weight quite well. And I do it off of plants. You do what you wanna do, okay? I'm not the nutrition police, but I am gonna say that if you have a goal of reducing body fat in order to run faster, you're not gonna do it by having high fat foods. You're not gonna do it with olive oil, which is pure fat. You're gonna wanna have carbohydrates, enzymes, fiber, water. These are the things your body needs to run well and they're contained in these foods. A final point on all of this is that really, please do not get obsessed with the number on the scale because as you've seen throughout this video, it's not the weight that matters, it's the composition of your body. Now you need to fuel yourself, especially if you're a long distance runner. If you under eat, you are going to run into problems. You're going to hit the wall. You're going to run out of glycogen. You're going to get stress fractures. You could get amenorrhea. You could have all sorts of problems. You got to be getting your nutrition in. So do not under eat. If you're trying to count your calories, you're probably going to fail. Now, if you're eating the same diet that you were eating, but you're trying to lose weight by just counting those calories and eating less, it's unlikely to work because many of the foods that we eat are just so high in calories. They've got oil, they got fat. They're just like cheese wrapped around bacon, deep fried in butter. It's just like, it's crazy. And then there's alcohol and all these things that are just super high in calories. So you're not gonna want to deprive yourself and you're not gonna be able to deprive yourself for a long period of time before you just swing the pendulum back. So the way to do this is to eat a lot. Now, if you're gonna eat a lot, it should be low density of calories. That's another beautiful part about eating fruits and vegetables, potatoes, rice, corn, lentils, beans, things like this is that they're pretty low in calories, but they're very high in nutrition. So you can eat a lot of them. You can actually eat more food and you can be very full and very satiated and you don't have to worry about overeating and you never have to count a calorie because there's not that many calories in lettuce and apples. So you eat as much as you want and you're gonna do quite well. You eat until you're full. That's my best recommendation for you is to eat whole food, plant-based, much of it raw until you're full and you're satiated and then stop. Nutrition is a spectrum. It's not about perfection. So do what you will. Coming from somebody who can run 300 miles in the desert, not get dehydrated, not run out of glycogen, feel good, pull my own body weight, has a metabolic age of 30 at the age of 40, perhaps that's part of the reason why you're here. It is possible that I'm not getting it completely wrong. Although I guess anything is possible, isn't it? This is a crazy world. Anyway, this has been Andrew Snow with Runny Lee. I do hope that you've enjoyed this so much. I will see you back here on our next video and we talk about all sorts of stuff. We've got a couple of videos coming up for you on the diet of the fastest marathon ever run. It's really cool. And we've got, uh, of course, many more training videos on how to maximize your performance in the marathon, ultra marathon, and track events. I'll see you in our next video. Now, if you have a recommendation for a topic that you want me to cover, just drop it in the comments below. For those of you who have been watching the channel for a while, you may know about the Run Elite book, where I go super deep into mindset and the structure of training. And I'm working on the second book right now, which is on nutrition for elite endurance performance. Uh, it's got a while to go, but I did just spend an entire week on writing retreat and I've got about 200 pages written already. So it's in the works, it's coming, but it's gonna take a while. So if you wanna know more about training structure and mindset, pick up a copy of Run Elite, Train and Think Like the Greatest Runners of All Time. If you wanna know more about nutrition, I have another book coming out on that but there's a couple of resources that I'll drop for you below that aren't mine. They're just people who are extraordinarily smart. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. This has been Andrew Snow with Run Elite. Bye-bye.